Hello, everybody. Welcome to Friday's live stream. And uh, today, just like the thumbnail and title suggest, we're going to talk about something that, uh, of course, has been brewing for quite some time, and it is uh, Ethereum Layer 1 transaction fees. Now, uh, before we get into it and talk about what this is, let me just make it uh, crystal clear that Ethereum is going to do great this cycle. Ethereum for this bull run is going to be uh, massive. And uh, I think with everything behind it and the history that it has, and of course, the probabilities of a uh, Ethereum ETF coming to light, which is over 45% now, I think it'll do quite well. Having said that, you can see that Ethereum and the price action categories done extremely well. In the last seven days, it's been up uh, almost 17%. Bitcoin's done 22% over seven days. And, and, you know, yeah, Solana did do 30% in seven days, but, you know, it goes down, right? Everybody, as everybody likes to say, ah, it's going down. But look, even XRP went up. I thought that was a stable coin. Watch out. But, uh, and then, of course, my favorite, Dogecoin, up 60% in the top 10 where it rightfully should be. So, <laughs> having talked about all this stuff, this is one of the issues, and you're going to see this more and more. If you're new to the crypto sphere, welcome. Thanks for coming by. I don't think we have too many tourists here yet, but just get used to stuff like this. So I try to do a transaction, and uh, this is for a new project that uh, I had gotten into. And when I tried to do any kind of withdrawals, I was greeted with this nice little reciprocity where it tells me that, hey, if you'd like to bring do that and do any kind of transactions here in the layer one, it's going to cost you 150 bucks. And I'm like, uh, I'm trying to move like 300 bucks. What's going on here? This doesn't make any sense. But uh, that is the fees. And that is just how it actually is. So I posted this. And I have to tell you, on X or any place else, you have to understand that there are people that have a ton of Ethereum that really believe in Ethereum. There are people that absolutely despise Ethereum. That are people that hold the opposite token, whatever that may be. I personally hold over any different cryptos. So for me, I don't understand it. And if I don't hold it and you go up, I'm I'm a, your biggest cheerleader. I'm like, great, congratulations. That's fantastic. Good for you. You did what most people can't do. So when I put this out, I wasn't ex well, I kind of was expecting pretty much the mental gymnastics that have to go through it. And some were some valid points, but this is just how it's gonna be. So Ben's chair. Uh, you know, rightfully said, hey, is there any other option, layer two, which is a good comment, actually. And I said, no, it's a new project, you can't do that. King Cole says, why use an ETH mainnet? Use any L2, they're 100 times cheaper. First of all, it's one of those things where like, if we're going into the next evolution of finance, and we're like, well, you can't use this layer one, you got to use a layer two. And you got to bridge it over and you got to do all these things. And you got to use a special type of uh, of, of wallet and you got to do something else. And, and it's just like, you can't make it easier than that. This is the future of finance. I don't think this is really doing doing so hot right now. Maybe it'll it'll pick up back up later. Who knows? Uh, Sam, my my financial friend says, yeah, same thing. Beardy, oof, <laughs> Des, put this stuff out. David Rosley says, hey, it goes up and down all the time. I moved some this morning. I only spent like four fifty on fees. I've been doing this the whole day, and that's the cheapest I found so far. One fifty. No, no, that, that, that's not true. That's not true. Before that, I think there was one for like one hundred eleven dollars. So I didn't post that, but still. And, you know, just a lot of things across the board. At least it's up. All Road says that's why I'm out. ETH has done great things for the sit base, but it's now weighing down compared to other uh, L1s. And then me says, check the traffic on the network before a transaction, my guy. And I'm like, I swear to God, I'm thinking to myself, this cannot be the future of finance. Josh says, we're trying to sell some ERC20 tokens to add to my WIF bag, which is not a bad project. $212 in ETH gas fees, forced, forced holding continues. And then someone else corroborated my, my story and said, hey, this is this was my fees today. And I'm like, you got to be kidding me. Anyhow, so you have to understand that as we move into the bull market, things are going to get exposed. And they're going to get exposed because when you have a lot of transactions, the transaction fees, you know, of course, move up massively. And there's a great uh, chart over on BitInfo charts. I wish they would update it to more, I don't know, more up-to-date type of platforms. Like, I don't know anybody who's using Dash. Sorry. Zcash? Who the heck is using Zcash? Bitcoin Satoshi's vision? Come on. Seriously? These are the ones they're using? Not that I'm calling them out, but I mean, come on, update a little bit. So if we're just taking a look at a Bitcoin and ETH over the last three months, and of course, Ethereum is in red, 
the average transaction fee is $22. Now, yes, on layer twos, it definitely is cheaper. However, when you're doing things like what I'm trying to do as far as like with, with a new project that's on ERC-20 token only, that's it. And then if you're trying to transfer things back or for NFTs that are on the uh, Ethereum chain, and of course you wanna, you wanna buy those or sell, or excuse me, sell those, uh, you're stuck on that chain. You can move things around, but it's not the same thing. For moving, yes, I get it. But for selling on the chain, especially NFTs and stuff like that, it is not happening. So here's the fees going back. And this is just three months, but I want to show you something over three years, going all the way back to 2021. This is how it was back then too. So, and Bitcoin is no, you know, is no swan song. It's not like it's it's uh, without merit of how high it can actually go. Bitcoin has transaction fees as well, and especially with ordinals. I mean, back in uh, December 2023, you had Bitcoin almost four times the transaction fee as far as Ethereum. And then, of course, the mental gymnastics starts to take over. Well, Bitcoin's a store of value. It's gold 2.0. Why are you moving it? You shouldn't move it. You got a diamond hands, da, da, da. And I'm like, look, I get it. I'm just saying that we're early to it, and this can't keep going on, especially with Ethereum. So just a little observation about what's happening when people come to you and say, this is the future. You're like, well, it is. It's just to get to the end point. Sometimes, you know, you have to go over some bumpy roads and this is exactly where we're at. So let me know what you think about that in the comment section. And speaking of L2s, I want to warn everybody about what's happening. There's a massive unlock going on in the next couple of weeks with Arbitrum and uh, not, no problem. No problem. Problems with Arbitrum, I own a big, huge bag. Very hopeful this goes up quite uh, quite majorly, but this is what's happening. Over $3 billion in crypto tokens are set to unlock this March with Arbitrum having the massive unlock. So Arbitrum is going to release more than 1 billion Arbitrum tokens on one day, equating to 87% equating to of its existing circulating supply by March 16th. Wow, that's a lot. This influx will be valued at approximately 2.2 billion at current market rates. Let me just say it again. It's valued at approximately 2.2 billion dollars. This unlock. The project's core team and advisors would receive 673 million Arbitrum tokens, and the investors in and then some kind of seed phrase, seed round, pre-seed round, some kind of investors are going to get 438 million of ARB tokens. Just so you know, for the 2.2 billion, uh, the market cap right now is 2.5 billion. And that's, again, 87% of its circulating supply. And this can actually be verified over on Token Unlocks. I, I link this in the description so you can check it out yourself. Upcoming events, 9 o'clock AM, it's two weeks away, 1.11 billion of Arbitrum. Now, Having said all that, you have to understand something. When you have a massive unlock, people will take profits. Will people dump like crazy until the price of Arbitrum goes from roughly $2 down to a penny? Probably not, especially if you're the team and you're an investor because you wanna milk this cow for as long as you possibly can. Again, I've got nothing wrong with Arbitrum. I, uh, Again, I'll hope, they, hope it does pretty well. But for them to sell everything, probably not. But you will probably see a little bit of a dip about what's happening, and especially with <laughs> the sell pressure coming in. Anyhow, I want you to think about that. So that's Ethereum and Layer 2s. Let's talk about some good stuff. Bitcoin. Bitcoin's the shining light right now. And, uh, you know, it's it's... It's the king crypto so far, and the ETFs and the numbers say just how well it's doing. Now, I'm not going to go over this uh, in detail because, first of all, everybody covers this, so you all know about it. I just thought it was interesting to yesterday, 29th of February, that the inflows from BlackRock was $600 billion. Excuse me. I always read these wrong. $600 million. It's not $600 billion. That'd be crazy. And then uh, the grayscale outflows and them dumping was 598. Essentially, it was a wash, but we still came up positive, 92. So grayscale continues to dump. I thought they were slowing down. It, they went from 137 to 199 to 55 to 44 to 22, then 125, 216 to 58. I'm like, wow, 
they got a long ways to go. And there's a great way to actually visualize that. That's this is from a website called heyapollo.com. And it takes a look at the ETF holdings. This is excluding uh, grayscale Bitcoin. So just take a look at this. And it's just like 10 seconds or so. But you can just see like just how much accumulation of these massive ETF institutions are taking on. Look at that, 100,000 in no time flat over. And yeah, so if we take a look at that, that is a lot of Bitcoin being hoovered up by these institutions. But one thing that was kind of surprising to me, because we hear about these, these great price action, we see it, we love it, we want it to go higher, right? Bitcoin to a million or whatever people, crazy price predictions that they're giving you today. But you'll notice that <clears throat> this is the ETF holdings over time. From the beginning of the ETF, and of course, this big blue candle right here, that's grayscale. Of course, they had all the cards. They had 617,000 Bitcoin just waiting to get dumped on. And boy, did they. So over time, you can see that it went from like 620, well, 607, 620,000. Let's just deal with round numbers. And you can see it didn't really, I mean, we saw a lot of price action, but it was dumping by, by Grayscale and picked up by BlackRock, Fidelity, ARK, Bitwise, and stuff like that. But looking over here, you're taking, you, you, you would, you hear about just how much it's, it's happening, but you're like, how much is it really? I mean, from the beginning, it was 620,000 Bitcoin. Now we're looking at a roughly of 780,000, somewhere around there total. So in the grand scheme of things, this isn't the whole marbles. This isn't everything. It's a good amount. And I know that people will you know, want to get an all-time high, which I think is coming anytime soon. But it is a process. It's much faster than what I thought it was going to be. But for us to say like, oh, you know, they have everything. They don't have everything. And it's been a slow accumulation. But just imagine this and extrapolate this out for three months, four months, five months. I don't know how much supplies out there, but apparently uh, 900 Bitcoin are being produced. 10,000 are actually being hoovered up by these institutions and ETFs. And, you know, I'm buying myself. <laughs> not, that, not that I'm making any kind of changes, but I'm just saying you probably are as well. So it's just interesting to take a look at just how far we've come and just how much the price will probably appreciate as time goes on, because in all honesty, who the heck is selling? Anyhow, let me just think about that. Interesting little little piece there. I linked that in the description so you can uh, show it to all your friends and orange pill them and whatever you want to do. And then also, I had to ask this question because, you know, we see this and we're bullish. I'm bullish, which is kind of strange because I'm not usually that much. But I had to ask the question, which was, and it was some of the me and Jess and Ben were, were, were talking about NFA Live. And Ben talked about it. He goes, you know, you know, these guys don't really share the principles. And I had to ask everybody, I'm like, do the Bitcoin ETF investors believe in the principles of Bitcoin or just the numbers go up? Like the people that are contacting you, you know, they are, they're the, you know, Johnny come lately people who are like, oh, I'm just here because I heard the number went up. And across the board, everybody's pretty much, I mean, there's 13% of people who really believe that, yeah, they're really all about decentralization and and a store of value and a flight to quality and all that stuff. And they don't really care about the number grow up, but maybe it's a little bit of both. But I personally believe it's a number go up type of thing. And if they really were into the ethos of, of Bitcoin, they wouldn't be using ETFs. They would be self-custodying it. They would be learning about why it is. They don't know. I don't think most of them know how important it is as far as, as a hedge against inflation or to deal with inflation or how it correlates with gold or uncorrelates with gold and really is the hardest asset in the entire planet. I just don't think they, they, they think that it is. They, they look at it and go, number go up. I've never seen this before. I'm in traditional finance. This is awesome. And it worries me because if something along the way happens, they, they double up, I think they'll at some point just sell. And um, I know people will say that's a little bit crazy, but uh, not everybody will. I think people will take profits. But when you don't know what you have, why would you hold on to it? I've, al I've always told this story about son comes home from school and he says, hey, I got you know 500 Bitcoin for $500. You want to buy it? This is in 2012. I go, what the heck's a Bitcoin? And he explained to me, I'm like, it doesn't make any sense. 
and I pass on it. And I can guarantee you with 100% assurance, as soon as that Bitcoin doubled, I would have sold all of it because I didn't know what it was. And I think it's the same thing here. So I know everybody's super bullish. I'm bullish myself. But just remember that you know, there are there is an opposite side of this. And instead of just going, hey, I should dump everything right now and, and get into it. I'm just uh, just plain devil's advocate. Anyhow, let me just think about that. And then also, um, good news, Coinbase sees a massive uh, 1 billion Bitcoin withdrawal. And uh, this involved a transaction of approximately 16,000 Bitcoin. This was uh, roughly 1 billion. This was yesterday, I believe. And uh, 16,000 Bitcoin was taken off of, uh, of, uh, of Coinbase. And I usually, if you're new to this, this arena, which most of you are not, you know that when people take Bitcoin off of an exchange, it's usually because they want to hold it for a long time. And that's good. I think personally that people got spooked when Coinbase went down at the height of, when was it? A couple of days ago when everything was going ballistic and we almost uh, touched 65,000. We probably would have hit an all-time high if it wasn't for Coinbase and whatever happened with them because they couldn't take the load. I think people got spooked on that. Like, you know what? Maybe I should uh, roll out some that uh, cold storage device. Maybe I should whip out my Trezor or my Ledger or my Tangem or whatever and uh, take that off the exchanges because I have heard about these things called Mount Gox and Celsius and Voyager and FTX. And that's just how it is. So I'm glad that actually happened. And uh, hopefully people will uh, understand that uh, these uh, dips or not dips, these uh, problems that uh, arise with these centralized exchanges can happen at any time. And you must always take everything off and you, you must always custody your own assets as much as possible. There's no excuses. There's no excuses anymore. If you lose it on exchange. All right. So I don't need a lecture. I'm not your dad. And then uh, lastly, uh, moving away from, from Bitcoin, let's talk about some uh, crazy DGEN plays. Well, not that DGEN. -y. So we did a video a couple weeks ago, matter of fact. And we talked about, it was, it was uh, Alvara. Alvara, I always say it. I think I say it wrong. It's a DeFi hedge fund. And we talked about this on our second channel, Dan DGEN. On that channel, it's more of the risky stuff. You're either going to make a boatload of money or you're going to lose everything. One of those two things are going to happen. And uh, we talked about Alvaro, and I said that, you know, there's two problems. You know, one of those was uh, the ERC-7621, uh, if it actually got approved, which it did by the Ethereum Foundation. So that was just, I didn't think it was actually going to happen. And uh, I mean, this fast, and it did. The second thing was about hype. And uh, it looks like it's moving in the right direction. So I have it on good authority. This is, just say it's a rumor. Uh, so Alvara, Alvara is going to be listed on Uniswap on the 4th of March. So you got three days. Nice. And this rumor, just rumor, I can't verify this, but it looks like a specific fund on a specific stock exchange is going to make an announcement next week, right in line with when this actually comes out of Uniswap. On top of that, there's going to be a partnership announcement for a top 20 crypto project. So uh, in light of that, I thought, great, this will be good times. What I'm going to do, I did, a, I did a giveaway, which I never do. But I said, hey, we did a deep dive into Alvara. I want you to watch it. There's a link in the description. There's a link also to this tweet. I'm going to give away $500 in USDT. All you got to do is this. I want you to follow Alvara protocol. I want you to join them in Telegram and then retweet this, this post itself. And uh, we'll do the drawing uh, live on Saturday. And I'll give away $500 worth of USDT. It's a very simple thing. I'm feeling very bullish. So let's do this. So yeah, so we'll go from there. And again, if you uh, uh, missed out on the uh, 10 cent IDO launch, have fun staying poor. Just kidding. Not really. All right. And then lastly, a plea for everybody. Uh, can we help John Deaton out? This man's a... a He's a good man. He's doing good things. He's running against Elizabeth, Senator Elizabeth Warren, trying to uproot her in Massachusetts. And on his secondary X account for Dieter for Deaton, Deaton for Senate, he's only got 17,000 followers. That's a travesty. It's a travesty. So what I'd like you to do is to follow John, 
keep up with him, support him as he tries to overthrow Senator Elizabeth Warren when we go from there. And that's it for today. So look, if you like today's video, give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing. Everything we talk about is time sensitive.